Time is up. I gotta speak. I have taken probably 30 vi different videos and pictures today trying to get, capture some of, and, and bring you current because the last time you saw me, I was standing in front of a semi of hay and I found that needle. I did. But uh, yeah, lots has happened and unplanned things and it, it's, it's fun. It's good. I'll see you in a little bit. The video you're about to see is just a bunch of collection of pictures and trying to tell you the story of like what happened. And I mean, I didn't take that many pictures and videos, but I do have enough to kind of carry through a story. So this video is basically mostly April and then the next one will be May and then, and then June. So it'll take two or three videos to bring you up to date and then we'll start over. Okay. Start over. Oh, I think I think I know. Look, these snap in. I bet you. Oh my God, this is so high. Don't these have little buttons that are supposed to pop out? <laughs> mm -hmm. There. And I'm off to go get some hair color and <laughs> scissors because the wind and this hair just not go together. They they're just not compatible. Where I'll find ways to, um, you know, keep it secure. But. <laughs> the road, the rough road, the bouncing, it really hurt my fibro, the wind, the heat. It was really getting to me, but I had to get things done. What can I say today? I came to town to do 10 things. And I don't know, altitude change? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just tired and it's hard. So I'm having a, I'm going to quit. <laughs> and this guy, truck pulls up in front of me. He wants to buy my RV. And I was like, yeah, all right, <laughs> go ahead make my day and then I was like I can't I, I can't sell it right he's like I'll buy it right now I'm like I can't I have nowhere to live I'd have to come live with you and your wife and that would cost you a lot of money <laughs> more more than the price of the RV and he just was relentless so he gave me his number and he's like well my I have the Chevy S10 truck 2002 I think and so I wrote down his number. I was like having altitude changes or fit I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to have a cup of tea and more ex nit nitro extreme stuff. Kayani's extreme and wait for that to take effect and kind of clear my head. But if it comes around again, I don't know. I could sell. I got to get propane. I have to go dump. I have to go get groceries. I have to go to the vet for Teddy, get some flea stuff. It's a Fushiwa day and it's windy. But it's not too hot or not too cold. So it's kind of, I'm just kind of, <laughs> that was those sound effects. It's not like, wah, it's like, <laughs> if since you asked that's why I'm telling you it's, it's what we're doing here I'm telling you what it's like to live in an RV today and you don't feel good and the noise and the the sound of the city and the I can feel the noise in my chest I got right now. The gifted land set into motion and inspired me to do so much research and do so many things. I started uh, looking at vans and seeing what they would cost and of course it seemed like too much to make payments and, until I saw this one and then I'm like mm, this is what I want so I'm not going to even try and get anything else. Kingman's Walmart was awful. I mean, there were buskers everywhere. Santa was cool, but, you know, there was like 20 of them, and they were aggressive. And then I watched a hit and run, 
and I had to get the guy's video and license plate and then wait for the cops and it just wasn't the day that I needed to deal with so much drama and so, so I headed for the high desert of Williams. So this is Williams off I-40 and then it's where everyone stops. There's the train station right downtown. There's a little strip. Just everything's walking distance. And then you just, it's the Grand Canyon's like 55 miles. But the it's a mountainous region. It's cool. The climate's beautiful. A lot of history. Oh my God, the tourism center is nice. All that stuff. So tourism, I mean, I'm sure millions come through here. I got to spend a couple weeks there and that was great, but I did have to go back to my land and get my little yellow trailer and all my things because I wanted to have a beautiful summer in the high desert of Arizona. And I was working on a great big plan and it was good. I never really got to see or eat or go out in Williams, but it was beautiful. I had the historic stuff too. Just like a replica of a little old western town. <laughs> so I went back to my land and I loaded up my little yellow trailer and I put my hitch inside and I was loaded and I took off. But then there's a little bit of a problem. So there it sits. <laughs> I have no idea what to do. But I'll think of something. Okay, so the weld And I'm just going to unload it. I'm going to put my hitch on the back and put the stuff on my hitch rack. And I'm just going to pull this off to the side and leave it <laughs> for somebody who wants it. Mm -hmm. So if you want it, Well, I really fell in love with going to the high desert or the mountainous regions of Arizona. I was, especially coming out of Mojave County and then to all those trees. And there wasn't grass because it was golden brown because of the drought, but it was still beautiful and uh, moderate climate. Even though there's windy days or windy afternoons, the mornings and evenings are beautiful. So that was... Uh, fun that but there were like and then the little bluebirds um I have some videos and pictures I'm probably showing you right now as I talk but they were just so cute and pretty but then I realized that they were hitting the window and when I took the pictures I, I got the feeling it wasn't really like they were wasn't a friendly thing they were fighting their picture so I might put something over those mirrors next time I go there so that they're not creating so much stress. It didn't seem like it was an enjoyable thing, like they were not in love with the, their picture. Williams is beautiful. It's 30 minutes west of Flagstaff. And uh, it's real close to town because I wasn't going to try and make it in Mojave County because I just didn't have the resources and the utilities and it just was not working at all on many different levels, although it's going to work. <laughs> it's just all the things that you know that I'm lacking. And... Uh, so the, oh, wow, and I explored the, all up in the Prescott and Chino and oh, Sedona Flex, kind of a the sh shoot the loop kind of thing. Oh, studied the land and real estate and location for a cooler plot of land and prices and where it's safe and lots and lots of research. It was just beautiful. And oh, and then this is what's, this is what's interesting. So it's the night before. I found this great location. I didn't take any pictures because I only went there one day, but it was the perfect rental location. It was a woman with like a farm, mini hobby farm, and she was going to rent me a room and I was going to temporarily be there um, as like a docking station because it was so inexpensive. But when I got to her land, 
then I realized, well, I could just park the RV and drop a shed there too. Um, it, so, but what was interesting, cause I had spent a month working on this idea of, and it's only two hours from the gifted land. So that's really like, you can just go back and forth every week if you want to, based on weather, whatever's better. Because sometimes the wind will blow for days or if it's too cold in the high desert. So I think I have found a good Arizona plant. And then, and then, and then. I know many of you have a lot of questions and I will answer them over time, over the next week or so, I, uh, I have a lot of answers. So don't worry about that. 